Welcome back to Invested, I'm Lockie, and today we'll hit Visa stock, the payments giant. Over the past six months, the stock is down over 11.15%, but over the past one month alone, the stock has risen 3.3% in value. So with a slight rebound in the price of Visa recently, the question naturally becomes, is the stock still undervalued, and is there still a buying opportunity present? Well, today, I'm going to be answering that for you. I'm going to be breaking down the business, focusing on all the key factors. It's financial strength, profitability, growth and management, then give you a current valuation and price target for the stock going forward, telling you if Visa is a buy, hold, or sell at this time. If you enjoy this type of content, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So opening up our screener here, we're going to start off by assessing the financial strength of Visa. How financially strong is Visa as a company, and how likely is it that Visa can endure a financial downturn going forward? Well, if we come down here and have a look at the financial strength metrics, and of course, when assessing the financial strength of any large company, there's really one key metric we focus on, and that is the cash to debt ratio. The cash the business currently has on hand to meet their short-term and long-term debts outstanding. And the current cash to debt ratio for Visa is 0.88, indicating that for every dollar of debt on their balance sheet, they have 88 cents in cash to meet that debt obligation, a fairly advantageous financial position. This indicates that if Visa's management so desired, they could instantaneously pat on 88% of the debt outstanding on their balance sheet before needing to look to additional operational cash flows to supplement their debt repayments on both an interest and principal base level going forward. So a fairly favorable cash to debt position. When you combine this favorable cash to debt position with the massive amounts of free cash flow being generated by Visa's core operations on a daily basis, you begin to realize just how financially strong Visa is as a business. This great degree of financial strength is accentuated by the high Altman score the company has been assigned. The company has been assigned an Altman score of 7.56, indicating a great degree of safety with the business and very little risk of financial default going forward. In the event of financial pullback, Visa is exceptionally well positioned with a decent amount of cash on hand and massive and consistent amounts of free cash flow being generated by their core operations, enabling them not only to endure a financial downturn, but also reinvest and reinvigorate growth through both opportunistic acquisitions and organic growth coming out of a pullback. So on a financial strength basis, Visa is outstanding. But that's simply the financial strength of Visa. Now let's have a look at profitability. Let's see how profitable Visa is as a business. So we come over here to profitability, and of course, when assessing the profitability of any large organization, there's really four key things we focus on. Number one is the operating margins, number two, the net margins, number three, the returns on equity, and number four, the returns on assets. So if we come down here and start off with the margins, you can see operating margins of 65.58% and net margins of 51.07%. Absolutely extraordinary. These are outstanding margins, some of the very best margins in the world. Net margins of 51.07% indicate that for every dollar of revenue that comes into Visa's business, they retain about 51% of that as pure profit. Absolutely outstanding margins, and it's indicative of the low capital cost nature of Visa's underlying business model. Visa is a payments network, and once their network has been established, there is very, very little marginal cost with each and every transaction completed upon that network. And thus, a tremendous amount of free cash flow flows into the business with massive, massive margins being maintained. These net margins are absolutely extraordinary, world class, and on a net margins basis alone, Visa is one of the single most appealing companies in the world from a profitability standpoint. But now let's have a look at returns on equity and returns on assets to give us an idea of how Visa's management are allocating their capital. So if we come down here to returns on equity and returns on assets, and of course when assessing a wonderful business, we're typically looking for returns on equity and returns on assets around 20%. So now let's see what Visa is producing. Visa is producing returns on equity of 32.92% absolutely outstanding once again, fantastic returns on equity, and indicative not only of a great degree of quality in Visa's underlying business model, but also a great degree of management competency. Visa's management are clearly allocating capital well to make high returns on equity, and that's symbolized by this phenomenal returns on equity figure. Coming down here to returns on assets, and although returns on assets isn't quite as high as our returns on equity figure, returns on assets of only 15.12%, and that is also below our 20% threshold, these returns on assets for me are absolutely fine. Given the scale of Visa as a business, a $470 billion company, returns on assets of 15% are absolutely fine. Going forward, if these returns on assets could improve somewhat, more around that 20% figure over the long term, given the low capital cost nature of Visa's underlying model, that would be the ideal outcome for Visa on a returns on asset basis. But right now, returns on assets of 15% cause no concern at all. So on a margins basis, returns on equity and returns on assets, the profitability of Visa is outstanding, an absolutely phenomenal profitable company and one of the single most profitable in the world. So on a financial strength basis, the business is well positioned by virtue of the massive amounts of free cash flow flowing in from their operations. And on a profitability basis, they're simply outstanding. But now let's get an idea of how much Visa is worth as a company. Because although it may be a wonderful business, if it's not trading at a fair valuation, then buying into the stock right now could lead to losses in the short to medium term. 
So let's come down here and have a look at some basic valuation ranks. And of course, when assessing a business, utilizing these basic valuation ranks, there's a lot of different metrics we can use to assess the business. We've got the quick ratio, cash ratio, PB ratio, PS ratio, all these different fancy, fancy ratios. But when it comes to assessing a business of this nature, utilizing these simple ratios, there's really only one I use, and that's the PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio. And the current price to earnings ratio for Visa is 38.4, indicating a fairly high degree of growth assumption priced into the stock going forward. Investors in the broader market believe that Visa can continue to grow and accelerate a rate going forward over the next 10 to 15 years. Growth rates of around 20% on both an earnings per share basis and free cash flow basis going forward over the next decade, and that's what this elevated PE represents. Whether or not this high PE indicates the company is over or undervalued is up for debate. What we are going to do later on is run a full DCF analysis, breaking down the company's earnings per share and free cash flow on a more granular level to give you a better idea of exactly how much the company is worth and exactly how much you should be paying for each individual share right now. So keep watching for that one. But before we get started on our DCF, I want to break down some basic financial data associated with Visa. So if we come over here, you can see the revenue and net income for Visa between 2010 and 2021. You can see back in 2010, revenue was around 8,000 and net income of 2,966. And then in 2021, revenue of 24,000 and net income of 12,311. So you can see a fairly impressive degree of growth over the past decade, consistent growth on both a revenue and net income basis, and very, very attractive to see as an investment prospect. Consistent revenue growth is indicative of a great degree of management competency, clearly allocating capital well within the business to stimulate consistent and impressive growth on both a revenue and net income basis. Very, very appealing from an investment point of view. And also taking into account the maturity of the business. Visa is already a very, very large company and still continuing to grow at a consistent rate going forward is a highly attractive thing to see from an investment. Coming over here to the cash to debt basis of the company over time, and of course you can see over time Visa has been accumulating more and more cash on their balance sheet. Back in 2010, cash on hand was around 4,000 and debt of 44, and then in 2021, cash on hand of 18,512 and debt of 20,977. So more and more cash being accumulated steadily over time, but also the employment of more debt. Beginning back in 2016, the company has begun to employ a large amount of debt on their balance sheet. In fact, starting in 2016, they've had debt in excess of cash on hand. Right now they have cash in hand of around 18,512 and debt of 20,977. So debt just in excess of their cash on hand. Some investors may feel this creates a degree of leverage risk for the business, that the business is employing too much debt, and that in the event of a financial downturn, they may not be well positioned to both survive and reinvigorate growth coming out of that pullback. For me, this isn't the case at all. Visa on a financial strength basis is simply world class. The massive amounts of free cash flow flowing in from operations offset this debt related risk and reduces the potential for financial default for the company to almost zero. On a financial strength basis, Visa is exceptionally well positioned, and despite this is a large amount of debt being employed on their balance sheet, it's absolutely fine given the consistency of their cash flows. On a financial strength basis, when it comes to Visa, I have no concerns at all. Coming down here to returns on capital, you can see fairly consistent returns on capital over the past decade. Back in 2010, returns on capital were around 11%, and then in 2021, returns on capital of 18.9%. So very impressive returns on capital over the past decade, at low double digit figure range for most of the past decade, of course, we had drop-offs around 2017 and 2009, 2011, understandable given the time periods. But by and large, over the past decade, returns on capital have been very consistent and at a moderate level. Although these returns on capital aren't extremely high, they aren't 20 to 30%, these returns on capital are absolutely fine given the scale of the business and its current maturity. Going forward, if Visa was to maintain returns on capital around this kind of 10% figure range, that would be absolutely fine going forward over the next decade. And on a returns on capital basis, the business is doing absolutely fine. So that's some basic financial data associated with Visa, the PE ratio to give you an idea of what the company may be worth, and also some profitability and financial strength data to give you an idea of how the business is performing. But if we really want to understand what Visa is worth as a company, and how much we should be paying for each individual share of the stock, then we'd have to run something called a DCF analysis, a discounted cash flow analysis. And as Warren Buffett always says, the value of any business is the cash flow that it will return to its shareholders between now and Judgment Day. And that's exactly what a DCF tells us. We're going to run a DCF on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis to give us an idea of how much earnings the company is bringing in, then how much of that is translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. So coming down here, we're going to start off on an earnings per share basis. And if we come down here, we can see the earnings per share growth rates over the past 10, 5, and 1 year period. Over the past 10 years, it's been around 19.1%. Five years, 18.6%. For the past one year, a slightly lower growth rate of 15.1%. Going forward, do I believe Visa will continue to compound at the slightly lower 15% rate? I think given the firmly entrenched nature of Visa's business model and the massive amounts of transactions still being done in cash and coming out of the struggles associated with the pandemic, Visa actually has a fairly favorable runway for growth going forward. Over the next 10 years, I can see growth rates actually exceeding their 5 and 10 year growth figures. Growth figures more around 20 to 21% going forward over the next 10 years, given the firmly entrenched nature of their business and the positive secular trends around the business. 
So going forward over the next 10 years on an earnings per share basis, we're going to utilize a growth rate of 20% going forward over the next decade. This takes into account the highly favorable secular trends around the business and potential for growth in both their core business segments and as they branch off into new areas such as cryptocurrency oriented transactions. So going forward, we're going to utilize a growth rate of 20% on an earnings per share basis going forward over the next decade using a discount rate of 8%. 8% of course is the long run return of the stock market and that's a fair rate at which to discount our cash flows. Then our earnings per share figure of $5.63 Take it down here of a 12 month trailing basis, we come up to a fair value price target for Visa of $237.14, signifying about 9% short term upside to the stock, and that the stock is trading slightly below its intrinsic value. The slight degree of undervaluation creates a small opportunity for value oriented investors, but more so a larger opportunity for long term growth investors looking to pick up a wonderful company trading slightly below its intrinsic value. But that's simply an earnings per share valuation. Now, let's have a look at a free cash flow valuation to give us an idea of how much those earnings are translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. So if we come over here, we're going to switch over to free cash flow. If we come down here, we can see the free cash flow growth rates over the past 10, 5, and 1 year period. Over the past 10 years, it's been around 18.8%. 5 years, 19.9%. Over the past 1 year, a jump in free cash flow of 52.1%. Massive free cash flow growth over the past 12 months. So once more, you can see highly consistent free cash flow growth, much in line with the consistency of the earnings per share growth over the past 10 years. Very, very impressive. But do I believe this 52% rate of growth is going to continue going forward? Do I believe they're going to compound free cash flow at 52% annually going forward? Absolutely not. This growth rate is far too high. It's more indicative of a one-time jump in free cash flow on hand rather than a consistent growth rate going forward. Going forward, once again, I believe the free cash flow growth rate is going to be more in line with the 10-year and 5-year growth rates of the company on a free cash flow basis rather than the overly optimistic 52% figure there. Once more, given the positive secular trends around the business and the potential for growth in not only Visa's core business, but also new emerging transaction segments, I believe that going forward, the growth rate on a free cash flow basis for Visa, as more free cash flow becomes accretive on their balance sheet, could be slightly higher than the 10-year growth rate for the company posted here. So once again, on a free cash flow basis, we're going to utilize a slightly more optimistic growth rate of 20% going forward over the next decade. So a growth rate of 20% on a free cash flow basis going forward over the next 10 years, once again with our discount rate of 8%, then a free cash flow per share figure of $6.48, taken down here for a 12 month trailing basis, we come up to a fair value price like of a visa, slightly higher, of $273.03, signifying about 20% short term upside to the stock, and that the stock is trading meaningfully below its intrinsic value at present. On a free cash flow basis, Visa provides a highly advantageous opportunity for both value investors and long-term growth investors. So as you can see on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis, it appears as if Visa is trading notably below its intrinsic value. But which of these valuations makes more sense for Visa? Which of these valuations gives us a better idea of exactly how much the company is worth and how much we should be paying for the stock right now? Well, given the growth nature of Visa as a business, although it's not growing at an exponential rate, it still is compounding its revenues around 20% per year going forward. I believe going forward, the market will likely value this company on an earnings per share basis rather than a free cash flow basis. Investors in the market more broadly tend to value growth centric companies based upon their earnings per share rather than their free cash flow. And thus, I believe a free cash flow valuation will give us a better idea of exactly how much the company is worth right now. So taking that into account, my current valuation for the company is going to be based on an earnings per share target. And thus, my current price target for Visa is going to be $237.14, signifying about 9% short term upside to the stock and that the stock is trading slightly below its intrinsic value. There isn't a great degree of of undervaluation here, so not a major opportunity on a value basis, but long-term centric growth investors could find a highly advantageous opportunity in Visa. The stock is trading slightly below its intrinsic value, and thus this provides an opportune time to buy a wonderful business and hold for the long term as the company compounds and continues to grow its revenues. Given the firmly entrenched nature of Visa as a business, I believe it's one of the companies with the single largest economic moat in the world, a business that isn't going away anytime soon, that will continue to be relevant and continue to grow at a sustainable, fairly high rate going forward over the next 10 to 15 years. I believe the company is exceptionally well positioned to succeed going forward into the foreseeable future. Given the company is trading slightly below its intrinsic value at present and the quality and profitability of its underlying business, for me right now, Visa is a buy. So that was my brief yet somewhat detailed analysis of Visa stock, a company with great financial strength by virtue of a decent amount of cash on hand and massive amounts of free cash flow being generated by their core operations, profitability that is simply world class with extremely high net margins of 51.07%, decent returns on equity of 32.92% and understandable returns on assets of 15.12%. The business is of an immense quality, one of the best businesses in the world on a profitability basis and it appears to be trading slightly below its intrinsic value right now, creating an advantageous opportunity for long term growth investors looking to pick up an exceptionally high quality company trading below its intrinsic value. Given the underlying quality of the business and the positive secular trends around their business going forward and the discount to its intrinsic value it's currently trading at, for me right now, Visa is still a buy.
If you enjoyed this video, if helped you learn something more about Visa as a business, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below and I'll see if I can get onto it. But until then, thank you and I'll see you in the next one.